playoffs are upon us. The wild card matches are the rearview mirror, and we are ready to talk post season soccer. Sydney with you, Tommy with you, Tyler with you. Guys, how's it going? Uh well, Charlotte got annihilated last night, so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was uh that was interesting. I, and I was not expecting no five two. No. Yeah, I was not expecting five two, to say the least. Um yeah, they just went off. Um Elias Manuel just was out of his mind and decided, you know what, we're not we're gonna we're not gonna take this lane down. Charlotte go home. This dude <laughs> scored three goals Ugh. all season and then scores a hat trick. <laughs> In one game. Incredible. In one game. That's crazy. Incredible. And then the Tommy, next did you game watch? Was, I, I, did, I watched a little bit of it, and then I, wa- mm. I watched more of the late game, and then, you know, the penalties. Man, I, I've never seen, what, I think it was three out of the first four shots were missed. Something like that. Yeah, or blocked, yeah. Sporting Kansas City hit the first, and then three yep. three after that are missed. And I'm like, nobody wants to, <laughs> nobody wants to move on. Nobody wants to play St. Louis. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But we got it right. Exactly, Sydney but, and um, I, uh, we our prediction. You know, uh, once again, Tyler, Sydney and I are on the same page. Doesn't we, count. We the... You said it. <laughs> hey, but but Salt Lake. Uh, I mean, San Jose. They they gave it to them though. San Jose. Yeah. Played yeah. A, they played a pretty good game, especially the second half. So yeah, yeah. So a goal is dropped in ninety minutes, and of course, as a reminder, those matches do not go to extra time the first round only in the wrong car round only they go straight to penalties and of course sporting kansas city winning in penalties to i guess win the right <laughs> to take on st louis city um yeah, but yeah we'll talk about yeah exactly but um we'll talk about that we'll get into all of the all of the pairings all of the player i've pay- playoff pairings i'm trying to say all the playoff pairings for you guys except in lady united we'll of course talk about that in depth closer to the day but um yeah you guys want to start with the east and work our way through that let's do it let's do it let's do it so wait we're not gonna talk about with... Atlanta united at all tonight <laughs> let's save it let's, well, let's talk about it at the end because people are clicking and they're gonna say we're not talking about Atlanta united they might stop it and say I don't want to listen anymore. Let's well, briefly. Let's let's give Maybe the fans briefly. what they want. Don't stop. Yeah, we give we give you what you want. Don't stop. Don't click away now. <laughs> if you're gonna yeah, click anything, we'll click the subscribe button. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Exactly. Good segue. We made Love this smooth, that. guys. We're we're, we're um, on a roll. Let's. Exactly. I'm predicting that this episode's gonna get better <laughs> from from here. So let, let's move on. Let's go. All right. Let's do it. Uh, let's start with Cincinnati and the Red Bulls. Red Bulls, of course. You know, annihilating Charlotte FC in the wild card round five two. At least been well scoring that hat trick, and John Tolkien scoring another goal. Really, the reason why they got to the playoffs in the first place. Um, but they take on Cincinnati, and Cincinnati, of course, have only lost twice at home. One of those. Guess who? One of their losses was against at home. I can the only imagine. <laughs> Throw the team. Times the Red Bulls. Who is it, Tyler? Red Bulls. Red Bulls, uh, October fourth, <laughs> they lost <laughs> two to one to the Red Bulls. So I wish the I wish yeah. the answer wasn't Red Bulls, and you were just setting us up right. for failure. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, that one of only two losses for uh, FC Cincinnati at TQL Stadium. That's become just a tough place to play for any team in its short existence. Uh, Thirteen two and two this season. Of course, one loss to the Red Bulls um, a few weeks ago. Um, they did beat Red Bulls at Red Bull Arena on July 12th, 2-1. to one, And they beat them at Red Bull Arena in the US Open Cup round of 16. So maybe a little bit of revenge is on the minds of the Red Bulls for this one. Uh, but, I mean, you got to go with Cincinnati, right? Lucho Costa, possibly an MVP of the league. Got Brandon Vasquez, who can score, of course. Matt Miasca was announced he's a um, Defender of the Year finalist. For the MLS awards, I mean, I'd be I'd be stunned if Cincinnati don't come out of this. And revenge will kind of be on Cincinnati's minds too, right? Um, I think they lost to Red Bulls last year in the playoffs, so I'm sure that's at the back of their mind. You know, Pat Newland will probably say it's not they've they they've passed that, but that's gonna I bet be at the back of their mind. So that being said, I think 
Cincinnati for sure. I'd be stunned if they didn't win this matchup. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think. I, I, oh, go ahead. No, I was just. Gonna, I mean, I, my two cents is. Um, I think. I think it's. Since he's the best team in the league, right? Supporter Shield winners, we get it. I think if you watch the match against Charlotte, yes, Red Bulls has been on a little bit of a tear lately, but you watch that match, and I think Red Bulls just exemplified all of Charlotte's weaknesses in the best possible way, or worst if you're a Charlotte fan. <laughs> um, I think it's easy to look at that game and be like, oh man, Red Bulls, like they're back on track. They're gonna go, they're gonna go far. And and they may very well do that. I don't know. It's the playoffs. You never know what's gonna happen. But since he's a good team, since he can play through that press, uh, Charlotte can't. Charlotte doesn't have the talent on the field to play through that kind of press. And I think in a game like last night where everybody's eyes are on it, it's easy to kind of misjudge maybe what Red Bulls are capable of based on them beating the crap out of Charlotte. So that's not to say it won't be a competitive matchup. I absolutely think it will, because like you said, Red Bulls, I mean, they got the better of Cincinnati, but Cincinnati is just all around the better team. And you're also going into this one, having played a lot more matches now, especially with, you know, the weekend game and everything else. So uh, it won't be easy, but I, I'm like, you. Yeah, I'll take Cincy all day. Oh, if this was, the old playoff format and it was just one game elimination i would take red bulls mm. and and one game but this is what the league wanted they wanted this best of three for one reason make sure none of these crappy teams sneak through to the next round right <laughs> because that's i mean it's happened ever since they changed the format teams sit back and they they, they wait to penalties and then just cross your fingers you can beat them in penalties so, because the league has changed that you know, that's not going to happen. So Red Bulls would never do that, by the way. Oh, no, they, they would never. I don't think they could. Never. I don't think they could. They could do a two out of three games. I, I do yeah, think it goes three, no, but right. it, it's going to be Cincinnati. Yeah. All right. So we're all in agreement for Cincinnati winning that series. Uh, moving on. Orlando, second seed versus Nashville, the seventh seed. Um, I'll say right off the bat for Orlando for two reasons. Facundo Torres, who scored 14 goals, and Duncan McGuire, the rookie, who has had a tremendous season, 13 goals out of the Super Draft. Um, I'll throw another reason, Peter Gallese, who was announced as a goalkeeper of the year finalist for Orlando. They're just on a terrific winter form. They have been all season long. Um, they're playing about as well as they have under, um, or as well as they have in recent years, and has a lot of people believing this is the year Oscar Perea has a, them in a really good spot right now. I think this is their best team since he's arrived in Orlando. Um, they've come to the playoffs, probably as one of the hottest teams in the field, four in a row. I mean, not against toughest opponents. Uh, Montreal, who didn't make the playoffs. Nashville, they beat them 1-0 at Geodis. New England, of course, playoff team. And then Toronto, 2-0. I mean which is a big accomplishment in and of itself. But <laughs> but, but they're, beating teams they sh they're beating teams they should beat. And yeah, that's they're what, beating that's what teams matters. that – Exactly, exactly. So Nashville, you know, I, I'm just not convinced that they'll pick it up. Um, they're going to need Hani Mutar and Sam Surge to really pick things up in the playoffs. Going to need Joe Willis to pick things up in the playoffs. Um, I just don't see them getting past this Orlando team. Offensively, I'm looking at their form – and over the last five matches of the regular season, and make sure I have my math right here, um, they scored three goals, and all of those goals were against New England, a 3-2 win. Outside of that, this team has not scored a single goal. I mean, that's crazy. In the final five matches of the regular season, that's insane. I mean, it, it, that's insane. And Orlando's winning this series. No, no question about it. You know, I think I agree with every single thing you just said. I think my biggest thing with Nashville is just the simple fact that their defense is so solid. Now they've definitely taken a drop in form recently that this playoff format really suits Nashville in a really frustrating mm. way, you know, mm. um, because they can sit there and absorb everything 
for 90 minutes and then go to penalties and possibly win it, you know, because at that point it's anybody's game. Um, but no, I, I agree with you. I think Orlando uh, takes it. I, I do. Now this one, I would actually, I think more than the first one that we talked about since and rebels, I think this one definitely goes to three actually. And I, I think one of those games is going to be Nashville frustrating Orlando into penalties and then winning in penalties. That's just my random prediction. But um, you know, really, as an Atlanta fan, this is a really annoying stat. But as a, uh, you know, for what we're talking about, Orlando has been the best team in MLS since June first. Hmm. So they've they've gone since June first. They've gone thirteen three and four. Uh, that since the League's Cup, they've went eight one and two. So, like you said, they're on a tear for sure. Uh, that's why they ended up in second in such a steady second. Like it wasn't like they, sn- they snuck in. Um, that's been a, it's been a pretty solid run of form for them. Um, and you talked about Facundo Torres. He's nine for nine on penalties this year. So, you know, he just having a year and the team is having a year. That being said, do I think that they could win it all? Not really. I do think yeah. they have some habits that may come back to bite them. And then again, playoffs is anybody's game, but um, yeah, I, I'm going to say Orlando and I think it'll be three personally. I'm looking through all the playoff series and saying, I can't just pick the, the top seed on all of these. <laughs> if there's one, I could see an upset. I'm going to say it's Nashville. I, I think Nashville, mm. Nashville beats Orlando. Okay. I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it's a crazy it's, show. So, like, when you have games against players in, like, your division, and I know we don't have divisions in MLS, but you have your areas around there, they're a little, they're dicier, right? Like, you have your rivals. Like, if we were in a playoff series with Orlando, I think anything could happen. I think that's why a lot of fa- our fans, when we put in, our listeners, we, we put the poll out, people wanted to play Orlando. I think when you have those type of games, like, when it's, like, a New York, New York, like, right, uh, Sydney, the buffalo bills against the giants like you see weird <laughs> things happen like in those games right like it's just like oh you you never expect the giants to, to come in and and you know beat this team or whatever that's how i feel about this series it's just two teams that don't like each other and i feel like emotions are going to be high on this one and i think nashville ends up pulling through on this okay so we're kind of come splitting on, that guys. one yeah i think you just said that just to drop a match into everything tommy convinced no 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 <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to this being being con- contrarian just to be contrarian no, i'm just kidding uh <laughs> no um well we have that's Philly, how, that's how he England. makes his living that's okay right <laughs> on, on betting on sports Fair. betting yeah exactly um moving on um uh, philadelphia new england um philadelphia kind of like cincinnati very good team at home just lost them one time at Subaru Park. Um, Andre Blake, I mean, Andre Blake, one of the best keepers in MLS year in and year out. And this team came a win away, <laughs> not a win away, but they came minutes away from winning it all, winning MLS Cup last year. Um, so they have the playoff experience. Um, New England have lost three in a row coming into Decision Day. Um, they, they did beat Philadelphia. They did beat Philadelphia. So... Maybe that gives them a shot of confidence going into this one. Um, one thing to add too about Philadelphia, they've won just once in their last eight matches, and at one point they had five draws in a row. Their only lo- their only win in the last eight matches is against Atlanta United. Go figure. Uh, outside of that, they've drawn either drawn or lost every match they've played. Again, that win against Atlanta and the five draw streak for Philadelphia. Then they drew Nashville. They lost New, New New England. So maybe the form isn't as good as you would think for Nashville coming in or Philadelphia coming into this playoff series. That being said, you know, going back to the format of this first round, a match that is level after 90 minutes goes straight to penalties. So does that favor Philadelphia in this series? Um, I think at the end of the day, the fact that, you know, they've been tough to beat at Subaru Park really you know, for the past few years will be a major factor, probably the biggest factor in this series. And I think, yeah, Philadelphia wins the series. I'm going to go, I'm going to go New England, actually. Mm. 
and okay. I, yeah, I'm going to be that guy this time. <laughs> um, and I'm going to try to put into words my, my reasoning behind it. I don't know if I'm going to Philly. They haven't kept a clean sheet in nine matches. They haven't won an away game in seven matches. They're just not in form. And I think with it being the playoffs, if there's anything that could kick New England back into shape and kind of get their their head screwed on right after dealing with the whole Bruce Arena drama and everything else going on with their coaching staff and, and leadership and everything else, it's going into games where it really matters and because that's all you have to focus on. That's all you can focus on, right? It becomes your your existence for however long you're in the playoffs. So I don't know. I just I just have a feeling. Uh, I'm going to say New England, and I'm going to say it'll be three. I think it'll be all three matches, but uh, I don't think any of them go to penalties. Actually, so yeah, I was going to ask you. Do you think they went out right at Subaru Park then? And you know, you just answered that. So yeah. interesting, yeah. interesting. Okay, Tommy. Philly sweep. I hate them, but whatever. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tommy. Just dump it, just dump it on there like you're, you're cooking a right. Pizza, right? right? That's my analysis. I hate Philadelphia, but they're going to win. By the way, uh, they, do you guys know? I mean, they've, they, well, I was just going to say they have unfinished business, right? Like, mm-hmm. I think they're going to be able to turn it on here. Um, you know, I, I don't think they win the whole thing, but I definitely think that they turn yeah. it on. And, uh, the coaching staff will push the right buttons, I think, for them to to get them there. Um, I, th- I think, you know, this is an entirely new, you know, format and everything like that. But I, I think if there's a good coach out there, unfortunately, Mr. Driver's License uh, <laughs> is is going to get them ready for this series and, and they'll sweep. You know, the only team who beat them this year at home was, you know, that was? Guess Enlighten without us. looking. Um, Orlando, all the way back in March, March twenty fifth, that's two one. You wanted me to say that's New England, only... didn't you? <laughs> I, I I should say that's their only loss at home to an MLS opponent because then they lose as a Park to in League's Cup, if I'm not I mistaken. Believe so. I believe I, so. Yeah. yeah, I forget. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. I, I think so. But um, yeah, uh, as far as MLS. Is, it just as yeah. real quick, um, the head to head, I don't, I hate the stat personally, but I, I'll still see it all the time. Philly is uh, 21 wins, eight draws to 11, 20, 21, eight and 11 against, against New England all time. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Obviously, these teams have evolved a lot in the past few years, but, yeah. you know, Philly definitely owns that series for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, We'll see if they um, continue that trend um, this weekend or this next coming week, I should say. So that's the ease. And again, we'll talk about Lenny and I just a little bit at the end. Um, but yeah, let's go to the West. And again, let's start from the top seed on down. Um, Kansas City, Sporting Kansas City, of course, winning in penalties, as we mentioned, against St. Jose. And they have gained the right to play St. Louis, who is going to sweep them two matches i think i they, they just st louis has just been impressive this year um sporty kansas city has been a decent form you know going into the playoffs you know peter vermees i mean he's an experienced coach in this league if there's anybody that can get the most out of his team in this playoffs that could motivate his team you know feed their confidence you know make them believe that they have a chip on their shoulders, Peter Vermees. I mean, he's been around for, for a couple of years. Uh, that being said, you know, St. Louis is just, yeah, <laughs> just a couple. You know, that being said, St. Louis is just too good a team, you know, to lose this series. They've just been impressive. Um, this post, all right, not this postseason, this regular season right off the bat. Um, I think they're just, they're just, they just have the firepower to win this series. After that, I don't know. I don't think they're going to win MLS Cup personally, but yeah, I think as far as this series is concerned, I mean a derby, I mean Kansas City or Kansas Missouri derby, what have you, um, I think they're going to win. It's going to be a great atmosphere um, at City Park and Children's Mercy Park, and I can't wait to see it. But I think Seattle is going to come out top. Roman Berkey, 
uh, finalist for goalkeeper of the year. And, you know, they, you just never know who will score. One day, Sam Adunaran will score. The other day, or another day, Nico Giacchini will score. Or, you know, just they have a lot of players that can put the ball in the back of the net. And I think that's part of the reason why I think St. Louis is going to win. They're going to need just the two games to get past Sporting Kansas City. So, it's just my two cents of that series. Tommy, you look like you're chomping at the bit to say something. So, go go ahead. <laughs> Sporting Kansas City. Oh, the upset. Why? I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Period. I just yeah. I back at it. I feel it. it in my heart. Wrap it up. Hit hit the hit the music, Sydney. We're, 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 we're. <laughs> there, there's gonna there's gonna be some upsets, I think, in, in this series. And, and again, it's another rivalry type atmosphere here. And I think Spring Kansas City is going to to do what we talked about. They're going to do what they did yesterday, right? Get it to a 0-0 game or maybe get it to a 1-1 game and try to get it to penalties. I see, I see this team trying to do things like that um, to frustrate St. Louis. Now, does it happen? I don't know, but I, I just have a weird feeling that they've they got in, right? They snuck in. They're able to to win, you know, the the game yesterday. I think they're going to be able they're going to be a team that's going to frustrate St. Louis. They're going to do everything they can to keep it low scoring, stay close, get it to penalties and win. It it goes to 3, but they win in St. Louis and you know, St. Louis just has a great year but fizzles out. We need madness, right? Like I, I want I want MLS to be upset. <laughs> I want MLS to be like this didn't work, guys. You know what? Let's change it to best of five next season. But you know, we really need to make sure the right team wins. Baseball. <laughs> It'll be the baseball. Then we'll, we'll, then we'll just be to the NBA and the NHL in a couple of years. We'll we'll have the best of seven series all around. Right. <laughs> um. So I actually think Kansas City as well. Um. Woo-hoo! Yeah. I. I think. Wow. First of all, out of all the matches that are being played in this first round besides Atlanta, this is the one to watch if for nothing else than the vibes and the, the Derby atmosphere, because you know, you've seen the the whole capital of soccer in the U S kind of that going back and forth argument, which by the way, it's in Atlanta now U S soccer is so we can, we can watch <laughs> that argument. No, but um, you know, they, they both stake a claim to, to certain things and, and history for soccer in the United States and rightfully so. Um, but sporting Kansas city has tons and tons of experience in playoffs. St. Louis does not. So I do think that St. Louis absolutely is capable of going out and winning this series. And and I do think they can go relatively far, but I think Kansas city is on such a tear right now and they're going to have confidence and the way that they played last night, like I understand um, they didn't put the ball in the back of the net until penalties, but they look dangerous. They looked very dangerous. And if they can just be a tad bit more clinical in the final third, then they're going to be insane to watch. So I think, I think it'll be Kansas city in three. I think it'll take all three before it's mm. said and done, but you to be a good atmosphere. Nonetheless, yeah. I think it'll be really fun oh, matches well. to watch for sure. Really well. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to watch that one either. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, LEFC, Vancouver. I mean, uh, I I was, you know, coming into this, you know, just doing research for this, you know, I was super confident that LEFC was going to win this series. Um, but I looked at Vancouver, and Vancouver, you know, it hasn't been terrible going down the stretch. Uh, Vancouver... They actually drew LAFC 1-1 at home. So you know, that's, that's something to take a look at. It. In fact, not only did they do that, they beat them at BMO Stadium 3-2 to um, just a couple of months ago in June. So a couple of things that I looked at, but that being said, you know, Denny Buwanga, you know, Golden Boot winner, is heating up at just the right time. And... You, know, you talk about experience. The, this is the defending MLS Cup champions. You know, they know what it's like to lift a trophy. They know what it's like to 
play postseason soccer. They know what it's like to battle through adversity. We saw it last year in the MLS Cup against Philadelphia. So, you know, check all the boxes right there. You got Buanga heating up. You got Vela as well. You got a lot of different pieces that could really make things difficult for Vancouver. Maybe Vancouver wins one of these matches. Maybe they can get it back to their place, BC place, and maybe battle to on taking the penalties and win that way. But you know, I just think LAFC just has too much firepower. And you know, I know so far I've just picked the higher seats thus far. I think this will be the same. I think LAFC, for the reasons I just mentioned, are going to win this series. I kind of thought it was going to be a sweep, but I think they'll win in the three matches. Did I black out or did we? Did I miss the whole Seattle Dallas talk or did we just skip it for? Uh, we skipped it. <laughs> we'll, we'll oh, get to okay. It. I, I seriously thought I blacked out we'll get for to like it. a good. I got a text message. Go. I'm like, did I miss the entire thing? <laughs> oh, okay, I got nervous. I, yeah. <laughs> I was ready. I was ready for my Seattle hot take, and now I'm here. Oh, LA sweep. No way. You think uh, they the sweep? Not going to Canada. They they don't win Stanley Cups. They don't win MLS Cups. <laughs> That's my analysis. They certainly don't win MLS Cups. I was here Toronto a few years ago. I should. I mean, there's yeah, only a few, scratched but, it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, but uh, short travel too, I think, which is important, right? I mean, it's not um, that that long of a flight uh, fr- from there. I think that that's helpful uh, for them. But I, I, I don't see, I, I can't see Vancouver winning one of them. I, I agree. I'm in between both of y'all. I think. I mean, I think LA wins. I'll just get that out of the way. I think LA wins, but I think Vancouver has a shot of winning that second game back at home. I mean, anybody does. So that's not like a hot take or anything, but uh, that's that's a lot to it, it, for any of these teams in this playoffs. It's a lot to just ask for it for to to go and sweep the series. It's not easy. But that being said, LAFC can do it. They have the firepower. Vancouver. They've you know you mentioned the the match back in was it June? Um, they've had some yeah. turnover since then too. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, Gressel, our old friend Gressel was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then now he's over at our, our new opponent. Um, you know, so I think it, I think it can be done. I think Vancouver could win that second game out of just sheer tenacity uh, and, and <laughs> frustration. But mm-hmm. I think ultimately, I think LAFC is just the better team. I think they're going to take mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I know it's not like a hot take that anybody's looking for, but I mean, yeah. LAFC <laughs> is just a good team. So whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they'll have any issues beating Vancouver. And I mean they have a good chance of saying they're winning the whole thing, I think. So wouldn't surprise me to see them back in the MLS Cup. I mean that that could change. But uh, we could talk about that um when the conference semifinals roll around after this series. Now we'll talk about Seattle and Dallas. Uh, All right, I'm ready, I guys. It. I'm ready. I, <laughs> what you go, why don't you I'm go ready. first? <laughs> Seattle. Why don't you go first? Seattle. Seattle. Seattle's going to win. Uh, they are my dark horse for winning MLS Cup. They have not lost. All right, Sydney, you ask all the questions, so I'm going to ask you a question. When was the last time Seattle lost a game? They haven't lost in their last nine. I wrote it down, okay. but oh, I couldn't well, tell Sorry, you. I didn't read your notes. Uh, <laughs> I know you who did they, who'd they lose to? Dallas? Us. Oh, I, you know I, what? I, I threw it. I threw it up in there. Uh, for you. He's gonna slam dunk. It. That was yes. that was the alley oop, man. That was he laid it. Maybe up he like, thought I was trying to. Yeah, trick you him. did. <laughs> it was Is that a term now? Like like you, you tried to nick Firmino, Sydney? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I, I set him. I set him up. No, I mean they haven't lost. They, they. I went back and looked, and I mean it's it's impressive of, of what they've done. Um, you know the fans were very frustrated right early on the season with Seattle and what does Seattle do even without Garth and, and Pineda, they have uh, they do what a Seattle post, does. Right. They, they have a post transfer window run <laughs> and yeah, I mean, they haven't all been wins, but they've been playing very good teams in the West and they're getting results. Um, they deserve to be the second seed because of how they finished very similar. I know Atlanta didn't get the same result and was able to get a top four seed, um, but they were able to, you know, get everything together, 
and and get all the way up to two. I, I think this team is going to make a lot of noise, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if they're in in the Western Conference Finals um, when it's all said and done. So yeah, Seattle with the sweep. Yeah, I'd agree with that last point. I mean, you know, we kind of joke about Seattle and the Zombie Sounders thing, but you know, here they are again, you know, getting caught at just the right time keep, every keep year. Keep shooting in the head, like, and they keep freaking coming yeah, back. Exactly. Yes, yeah, it just seems like every year this happens, and yeah, you look at Dallas. You know, Dallas. Well, the Sounders have haven't lost in their last nine matches. Neither has Dallas. That being yep. said, it just feels different with Dallas. You know, they just had have difficulty putting the ball in the back of the net. Um, there are a bunch of matches where they just scored the one goal. Maybe they scored twice against Atlanta, but then that kicked off this stretch where, um, I believe, in seven matches in a row, they scored more than one goal just once against RSL. The other six matches, they just scored one goal in each of those, one goal or less. They played Houston to a draw. And the, on the decision day, they scored four against the LA Galaxy, which, whatever. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, like, what are you, you know, saying? Like I said, the name is the Galaxy side. Um, yeah, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it, it just feels different than the Sounders. The Sounders, like I said, they have the experience, they have the talent. Smetzer knows what it takes to win in this league. That's nothing against Nico Steves, but Brian Smetzer yeah, ha- is a winning coach in MLS, and he's proving year in and year out that he knows what it takes, or he has what it takes to rally a team at just the right time, hit the right button, especially the right buttons, and you know, capitalize on his team's t- talent, and he's done it again. And I agree with Tommy. Like I said, this could be a Western Conference final team, They'll certainly beat Dallas, I think. I think the fact that the draws have figured into the equation makes me think at least one match will go into penalties, maybe two, but I think in the end, definitely Seattle is going to win this series. Yeah, I, I don't really have any hot takes, uh, but just to add fuel to that fire, Dallas has a handful of injuries that they're dealing with right now as well, mm. and, and have some of them have been out for a while, but I mean... Sebastian Legette is, you know, maybe going to be back by then. Um, Jesus is another one who probably won't be back by the beginning of the playoffs. I mean, there's a handful. So Sounders, again, you said it, zombie Sounders, they get hot at the right time. And maybe they're not as hot as they have been before, but they're winning games and they're, they're second for a reason. So I don't think there's anything that just screams, oh, well, Dallas is going to get the upset in this one. And talking about the lack of travel and the last one we talked about was when LA and Vancouver Seattle to Dallas is a long freaking way. That's a mm-hmm. long way. So that's going to wear on, on Dallas having to go back and forth. Yeah, for sure. So I think it like takes two agree. personally, just the two games. Okay. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, last one, Houston RSL, you know, both teams, you know, it's like at their form guide, both teams have been in decent form. Houston, have drawn and lost twice in the last four matches. RSL, on the other hand, are three one and one in the last five matches. So not terrible form. That being said, RSL just seems very inconsistent. I mean, you look at the teams that they played down the stretch. Sporting Kansas City, who've kind of been who were kind of on a down slip before they really get themselves into the playoffs. Um, the Galaxy, they drew the Galaxy, and they beat. Colorado Rapids. Um, I mean, they had a win in those last five matches against LAFC at BMO. So, I mean, they have been in terrible form, but, you know, they just struggle with consistency down the stretch. And, you know, they were in a little danger if they didn't get on a little run of missing the playoffs altogether, but they were able to make it at, make it in at the end. It was just because the West is just so compressed. Um, I feel like they could sneak one out at home RSL at... America first. I almost called it Rio Tinto, but America first field. Now it's called. It'll it. always be uh, Rio Tinto. <laughs> the riot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they could sneak one, sneak one, sneak a win up there, but you know I just feel like Houston is the better team, top to bottom. Um, Herrera has been terrific. 
Uh, they have other players that can, you know, make things difficult on this team. And, you know, just from a talent standpoint, I think Houston's going to win this series. Um, Bossy, 10 goals, uh, maybe a bit of a penalty merchant, but, um, you know, 10 goals is 10 goals. Um, Bear, Corey Baird, um, Herrera, again, like I mentioned, has been in great form. So, yeah, I mean, long story short, I think Houston's going to win. They're going to beat RSL and advance to the next round. I think Houston's going to win, and I'll tell you why. Franco Escobar. Why? Uh. <laughs> Franco Escobar. Playoff Play Franco Escobar. Escobar. So, yes. yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I I think I agree with everything you said. They're going to win. Uh, one thing to remember, too, is they have very recently beat Salt Lake in a very important game, which was the Open Cup semifinal. So they know they can do it. Yeah. And I just think it's not going to be easy. Um, I don't think this is maybe – I don't. I don't have the confidence to say this prediction as I have with some of the other ones, but I still think. I still think it's Houston. Yeah. Here's the analysis: you only get at scarves and spikes. I hate. <laughs> if there's a team name that I hate, it's Real Salt Lake. Real, not real. Gotta real, say, real. Real. No, you know what? No, Lake. I'm not even saying. I'm, I'm, no. Or it's real Salt Lake. Like. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. It's Houston. Houston. Two nothing. Period. So Houston win because they changed they changed their, change their name. They changed their name. Loser changes their name match. Oh, that'd be cool. That's like all I have. Match That's, or a, I, I, I haven't a watched match. much much. I've watched Houston. Um I haven't watched Real Salt Lake uh <laughs> at, at all this season. Uh, really so no it, it's houston okay yeah, i like it so breaking Alrighty. news uh columbus yes. has announced that they are going to be doing a blackout um at their first game of the season so everybody's going to be wearing black apparently interesting okay well we'll see Why? how that turns out <laughs> intimidation i don't know I, maybe that's the thing <laughs> Like it's yellow, right? I mean, I guess it's yellow and black. Yellow and black, but and then maybe they go all yellow if they get to game three. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll maybe. just make I don't the, know. That'll make the four of four jersey just fit right in. <laughs> right. As long as, it's not, as long as it's not Star Wars night, at, you know. Yeah, dude. I, think I don't want you ever going yeah. to another one of those. Well, yeah. I'm going. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll be it. Not the Star Wars. <laughs> Lord no. of the Rings night. <laughs> you know, no, if there was a game that I had to choose to take over our our Twitter account and be at the game, you know, Doug's like looking up like I'm sitting next to Doug in, in the press box and he's looking up, you know, like facts about Atlanta United. And I'm just sitting there at half just writing, hey, everybody's Star Wars sucks. What's your favorite trilogy? That's not Star Wars. <laughs> and that was my entire and like Doug's just like I, I see him going and I think he follows our page yeah. and I see it. I'm like, come on, Doug, laugh at my jokes. <laughs> you know, spoiler, he didn't laugh. So uh, that's OK. I'm sorry, Tom. I, I've got another, I got another try this Wednesday. Yeah. I'm going to try and make him laugh. Get him. Uh, real quick before we go, just super brief thoughts about Atlanta, Columbus. Super brief. We're getting smoked in game one. <laughs> oh, I <have laughs> voted confidence. Uh, I, do we want a hot take? I mean, you're hot. I, sure. My, mine wasn't a hot take. No, it wasn't. You did almost just say I was hot. Thanks, Tommy. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. So he still hasn't denied it. Look at that. Um, <laughs> Atlanta in two. Ooh, oh, we were just talking about game one, I thought. Take. I thought that's what we were doing. Oh, oh. okay. Atlanta, first one. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay. Um, I don't think Atlanta's going to win. Okay. Win yeah, I don't what? think Atlanta's going to win. Um, win what? The first game. Game one? The first game. Game okay. one. Game one. Game one. Well, let's, uh, let's Could just, be wrong. I mean, we, we got a couple minutes here. Do you think they get swept? No. Better not. <laughs> or my whole, my whole take is wrong. 
So, Sydney, thank you for for posting my rant on Instagram. I appreciate it. I went back and listened to it today. And YouTube Shorts. (laughs) Uh, And YouTube Shorts. But I thought about this. Really, what I think one of the most important parts is I went back and saw a picture of what the stadium looked like during the conference finals, I think, you know, with the whole thing said ATL and all that. And more of the the whole not having it on a weekend thing. Like, I, I highly doubt they're going to open it up for 70,000 people, this, yeah. this playoff game. And and that's that's where you're missing this magic, right? Like you've and this is this is. This is not crazy, Tommy. Talking. This is. I, I, I've calmed down now, really and, and I'm just giving my honest thoughts. All over the world, when you see these big matches, right? Everybody's there. The stadiums are full. They're active. You know, and and part of that is, is before the game, right? A lot of people are drinking. They're having fun. They're getting pumped up. You know, they're hours before the game. They're getting ready. They're having fun. And they get in the stadium, and they're just ready to scream. You're missing out on that. Uh, on these weekday games and I, i'm gonna stick to that and we'll see what the atmosphere is like when it gets to mercedes-benz and we'll see what happens in columbus on on a wednesday yeah. night a cold wednesday night but you're gonna i think they're gonna transition probably to, to weekend games after this i assume at least but for this round i'm very interested to see what the atmosphere is in all these stadiums because they are you know there are weekend games but there's not a lot of them. There, there are a lot of weekday games. I'm curious to see how that comes off on television. Because I think when you're selling this league, you're selling that that picture of Mercedes-Benz Stadium where the, it's completely, you know, the stands are crazy, crazy TIFO. Um, you know, the fans are, the mics are, are crazy of the fans chanting. Like, I think that's what you're going to miss in, in this Atlanta game. And it's just a shame because we haven't had a playoff game in a very long time. And that home playoff game on a weekend could have been really magical. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. And I hope it gets yep. fixed next year. This, you know, as a, as a quick side thing too, um, and this is something for you to look forward to. I have a, we have an article coming out uh, for Dirty. I still South haven't Rockets. read your last one. I'm so yeah, sorry. I, I forgot I'm to read the thing on <laughs> how, how Almada is getting replaced. Yeah. <laughs> terrible friend. Um, but no. Chatted with uh, Carlos Bocanegra today, actually, which is cool, uh, in the sports science department. And one of the things that came up during that that chat was um, the 2018 and 2019 off season for Atlanta was something like 23 days. And if you remember, I think it was December 7th, if I'm not mistaken, right, was MLS Cup that year, 2018. Um, so you had a very short time before the, they got back to the regular season. I think Apple needs to look at the way everything <laughs> there we go baby it doesn't have the date on it i was hoping for the <laughs> date but continue um but i think apple will probably look at this considering leagues cup and everything else going on and i just don't see them pushing all of this back as late as they have this year going forward now and we talked uh with miguel giardi the other day and he said you know they're, they're still looking at a lot of things they're going to fine tune things but yeah i i agree i think you're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing the league a disservice. You're doing the, the Apple deal a disservice by not having an Atlanta packed out on a weekend or an LAFC packed out on a weekend or Miami rest in peace. But next year, probably packed out on a weekend. Like you're, you're killing yourself. You're shooting yourself in the foot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, don't be afraid to take on the MLB and the NFL. You have, you have some firepower now to fight against the thought process that, oh, you you can't you can't compete with those guys. Maybe not numbers wise yet, but the people that are that are there, that are the fans that want to be there, they're gonna be there and it's still gonna be plenty to pack out stadiums a hundred percent. So I just I hope they fix it next year and I hope that is yeah. a big, big deal going into the the twenty twenty four season. Yeah, I think they will. And um uh, again, we'll we'll really dive into game one um yeah a few days here but uh i think they will i think there's some proof as well they have to be uh they really have to be i think this is kind of just testing the water see how it works but i think mls will kind of make some changes i don't think um i don't think it'll be a lot because you don't want to make multiple changes in multiple years to the format but i feel like they just need to settle on one um 
one format and stick with it. So, yeah, interesting. Like you said, what happens in 2024 and beyond. Um, yeah, join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash scarves and spikes. Subscribe, please subscribe if you haven't already. Really do appreciate it. We're looking for a thousand subscribers by MLS Cup. We will get there with your help. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell everyone you know to subscribe to tell us your today. Enemies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, tell the SKC social. fans to follow us because I picked them. Exactly. And, and Tyler, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. And we will talk to you next time. So long. See you guys.